Hi people, it's me, Anya, my pronouns are she and her, and welcome back to my channel for part 16 of my favorite books with sapphic main characters. So for those who don't know, sapphic is an umbrella term for women loving women, which includes non-binary people. So without any further ado, the first book on this list is called If Tomorrow Doesn't Come. This story is a YA contemporary science fiction that follows a young lesbian main character with anxiety, and an asteroid is about to hit the earth in nine days. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good. It's one of my five star reads of the entire year because I absolutely loved it so much. First of all, the world building was so intriguing and so interesting. The mental health representation was top notch, spot on, and it was so good. The sapphic romance was well paced and so lovely. The friendships were iconic. The characters were so well developed and so distinct. This book is absolutely so good and so emotional and just so well done and well paced in literally every single element. This book deserves all the type and so much more. So with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Basil and Oregano. This story is a YA fantasy graphic novel that follows two sapphic main characters as they navigate going to a magical boarding school where they intertwine cooking and magic which I think is absolutely so fascinating and so well done. I literally love it so much when authors take such like a basic mundane concept from the modern world and then switch it to make it more magical than it seemingly already is, if that makes any sense. This book is absolutely so good and so well done. First of all, the illustrations are so pretty and absolutely so stunning. The plot is so intriguing and so engaging. The characters are so individually well-developed and distinct, and those sapphic romance made so much sense. I loved their genuine, like, chemistry and connection. This book is absolutely so good. It does read a little bit younger for YA, but that didn't deter me from enjoying this book at all. This book is absolutely so fantastic, and it's so magical, and absolutely so immersive. And with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called The Do and Donuts of Love. This story is a YA contemporary following a young sapphic plus size main character who enters into a reality TV show and some of the contestants include her new crush as well as her ex. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good and I just really really enjoyed it. First of all, the plot is absolutely so engaging and so intriguing and all of the reality TV show elements was so well done and so well paced and it just felt so immersive and so well done. Sometimes when I'm reading a story that involves reality TV show elements, it doesn't really feel immersive since I know it's fake even if the main character doesn't, if that makes any sense. But within the parameters of this story, it just felt so interesting and so well done and I was so intrigued by the main character herself because I just love her. And the sapphic romance was so well done and just so good. This book is absolutely so good and it deserves all the type and so much more because it's definitely my favorite book by this author so far. And I really, really hope that her next book is better. Although I don't know if it can be better since this book was absolutely so excellent. I don't know if that makes any sense. But basically, overall, this book is absolutely so good and it deserves all of its hype and so much more. So with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Ode to My First Call. This story is a YA contemporary following a young bisexual main character over a life-changing summer, which is perfect for September, since I believe September is Bisexual Visibility Month. So happy Bisexual Visibility Month to all of the bisexuals in my audience. But anyway, this book is absolutely so good and it truly amplifies my expectations for the author's next book, which I believe either comes out this year or next year, it's another middle grade book. But anyway, this book is absolutely so excellent and it's so well done. First of all, the free verse writing format felt so lyrical and so pretty. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. The sapphic romance was so cute and so lovely. The queerness felt so authentic and so well done. The plot is so engaging. I love the sibling dynamics. I love the family dynamics. They felt so authentic and just so good. The characters were so well developed and so distinct. 
everything about this book felt so authentic and absolutely so emulsive. So anyway, with all that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Whale Echoes Die. This story is a YA urban science fiction that follows a young sapphic main character who's looking for clues about her mother's death in a ghost town. This story is absolutely so excellent and it's so intriguing. The setting just felt so eerie and so mysterious without feeling too weird that it was off-putting, but enough amount of weird that it was more intriguing and engaging. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but the plot was so riveting. The mystery was so interesting. The sapphic romance was so cute. And like based on such genuine chemistry and connection, I just really, really enjoyed this book so much. The characters were so well developed and so distinct. The sister relationship was so good and just so well done. The writing is so lyrical and literally so intriguing. This book is absolutely so good and it's so underrated and it literally deserves so much more hype. So with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Something Like Possible. First of all, there's a trigger warning on the story for sexual assault. Although, and I've mentioned this before, that does happen in the latter half of the book. I would say even more specifically, the last third of the book. So be prepared for that. But anyway, this story is a YA contemporary following a young bisexual main character who's running for campaign manager and she has to find a new junior class president because the last junior class president that she was the campaign manager for just dumped her because that's her ex. So I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but basically overall, this book was really, really good and I really, really enjoyed it a lot, much more than I was expecting to. And it gives me hope to try to reread the author's debut, which I had DNF'd multiple times in the past, hence why I had lower expectations for this book. But anyway, overall, the plot is so intriguing and so engaging. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. The sapphic romance was so cute and so well done. And everything about this story felt so good and just so awesome and just absolutely so excellent. This book is really, really underrated and it deserves so much more hype. So with that said, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Stars High Your Files. This story is a YA science fiction that follows a young sapphic main character who's trying to unravel a mystery because she was framed for it. This book is absolutely so excellent and so good. First of all, the world building elements made so much sense and they really made the story so much more immersive than it already was. The plot was so engaging and so intriguing. The sapphic romance made so much sense and I love their chemistry and their connection and it felt so well paced. The characters were so well developed and so distinct. Everything about this book was absolutely so good and so excellent. This book is really underrated as well, which I know I've said and repeated a lot throughout this video as well as throughout my entire channel in general, but this book deserves so much more hype and it's really, really good and I will gladly read more from this author in the future because this book was so good, because it was so intriguing and so emulsive, and I was just so captivated and riveted by the mystery from the beginning to the end. So anyway, overall, with all that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The last book on this list, and certainly not the least, is called The Third Daughter. This story is a YA fantasy following two sapphic main characters who must work together to save their corresponding sisters. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good. First of all, the world building was so magical and so fantastical and it truly felt so immersive and so stunning. The plot is so intriguing and so engaging. The characters are so well developed and so distinct and their sapphic romance is based on such genuine chemistry and connection. This book was on my July TBR and I'm so glad that it lived up to the hype because it was absolutely so excellent and so well done. I'm so excited to read the sequel, which I believe comes out next year, and it's called The Second Son or something like that. But anyway, overall, this book was so good because it felt so magical and so immersive and so intriguing and just absolutely so interesting. And again, it's so underrated and it deserves so much more hype because it's definitely my favorite book by this author so far. So anyway, with all that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. So in conclusion, I really hope that this video helped diversify your bookshelf. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to give it a big 
thumbs up comment down below the vinyl emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video thanks for watching subscribe to my channel if you're new and i'll see you in my next video bye